Um, but I found that there's some spices that go in the rice. Yeah. Like Anyways, it was good. Good. Well, I'm glad. It came out all right. One day you could have the whole recipe. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, no, I really want to know. How imagine how it tastes when you've the, done the whole thing. Or what the original, because I also didn't have fresh mint. So yeah, I had yeah, to, yeah. I got dry mint. Yeah. So I, it's pretty a mess. So I, I would uh, Dad do, wouldn't judge you for I that. I feel like it's more insulting. Than, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was more like a nice thing and it ended up being no, more that of an is insulting a nice thing. thing. Dad would definitely not judge you for that. Because every time I was like, Dad, we're going to make a recipe book and tell people to marinate for four hours overnight. Like, yeah. if you told me to do that, that, I don't plan that far ahead when I'm cooking. But he was like, if you can do an hour, that's better than nothing. Yeah, it's just yeah. like, I think he's doing it in his most perfect way, which is like to marinate overnight or to like, I guess, have the fresh herbs and stuff. But mm. I don't think he would judge. I think he's just grateful that people are cooking it anyway. Yeah. To be honest. <laughs> so is it... So when, because this uh, mum's chicken biryani mm -hmm. is his mum's? Yeah, that's his mum's. Okay, okay. um, well, his memory of his mum's chicken biryani, his mum passed away like 10 years ago. So obviously this is all based on memory and like a lot of these recipes are like his dad's recipes, um, but they're like his memory of them and his take on them basically, rather mm -hmm. than any passed down notes. It's just from his, his brain. Um, not like he has like his mum's cookbook or anything. Hmm. It was what? never written. This yeah. is the first time it's been written, really. Yeah. We'll get it. Because I also I feel like I, I do have to give it some structure to, <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, yeah. to this thing. But yeah. Um, okay. So I'd say we can start. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'd say welcome. I always say welcome. But then I realize I always go to everyone else's studio. So it doesn't make... <laughs> I can say welcome to my studio. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Plantface yeah, Studio. Know, yeah, I don't know why I bring but... <laughs> Um, and welcome, you could, yours is welcome to the podcast, I guess. Welcome, I guess, welcome yeah. to the podcast. It's like more like an abstract yeah. space. <laughs> yeah, welcome to this space. Yes, uh, Tammy, mm -hmm. if you, I mean, I'll let you introduce yourself however mm -hmm. you want. I'm Tammy Aftab, I'm a photographer. I work in fields of fashion and portraiture, but also um, I do a lot of personal work with my family surrounding identity and specifically with my dad surrounding his illness of short term memory loss. Okay, thank you very Should much. Should I more about myself? I don't know what that's... I think that's a pre... That's a sum up, I think. <laughs> it's up to you. It's really up to you. I think that's my sum up. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I, we're here to talk about... Mainly to talk about your upcoming book. Mm -hmm. Or uh, by the time this releases, uh, it's probably be out. Mm -hmm. uh, which is The Rise is on the Hob. Quick note on this episode. During the interview, we forgot to mention that... By the time you hear this, Tammy's new book will be available on her website and that for each sale, £5 will be donated to the charity Muslim Hands, which are currently helping to rebuild houses that were destroyed during the floods of Pakistan in 2022. Okay, thank you. You can continue now. End of note. To do, I think, to get to it, because I think that's the main bit, um, I'd say we can start with... Um, I mean, you studied in LCC. Yeah. Just to give a brief. Yeah, kind of and to be fair, course. this project with my dad started in LCC, as in working with my dad started when I was in LCC, um, um, on my final major project. Which was um, called. Um, the dog is in the car. So yeah, so I first started working with my dad five years ago, about this time five years ago, um, on the rice is on no. <laughs> I started working That's with my cool. dad five years ago on um, The Dog Is In The Car. And that was a project specifically surrounding my dad's short-term memory loss. It started as these video conversations, kind of like we're having now, but way less professional. <laughs> my camera and my sister and my dad and my mum. Oh yeah, I saw them. Yeah, have these conversations and they were very much not how the project looks now. It was more a way of trying to um, capture moments of, uh, or evidence, I guess, of dad's memory loss. Um, so videoing him in conversation and capturing the moments where he'll say, you know, I forgot this, or I don't remember this, or did I do this? Um, and when I showed them to people in my tutorial class, at the time I, I thought I was making a documentary project about my dad's illness. That's how I, I viewed it at the beginning. But when I showed it to people in my class, they would laugh but in a way that's like with my dad, because throughout the video, I realized it's actually really funny and he's got such a sense of humor and 
his memory loss is something he treats with a sense of comic relief. And actually, people didn't find it sad. Well, they must have in some ways, but they also found him to be really funny and personable. And I realised that I didn't need to fit into this box of what we think of photographing someone with illness, which is tends to be or can be seen as something that's quite dark or quite sad or quite m melancholic. But actually, I, I thought... I could make something with him that is more true to ourselves and our relationship, which is something that is kind of more positive and um, humorous and not something that's mocking him, but something that's allowing him to be himself and allowing his illness to not really define him. Can you explain a little bit uh, for, for who doesn't mm. know the illness mm -hmm. or where this comes from? Yeah, so my dad has a thing called hydrocephalus, which is a buildup of cerebral fluid in the brain. Um, we all have it, but he has too much of it. And what happens is his brain can't drain it all in time. So for a long time, he was going in and out of hospital to get this fluid drained. Um, but on one occasion, they were doing a brain surgery and had a camera in his brain. And when they were pulling out the camera, it knocked his short-term memory. So it's not actually linked to his illness. It's something that was a complete freak accident yeah. in operation. Um, so then he was recovering from his surgery and his memory is a bit bad, but they didn't really know because he was just ill and recovering. And then as time went on, they realized his memory wasn't getting any better. And that's when they found out that it had been damaging operation, basically. Um, but his hydrocephalus causes migraines and it used to cause blackouts and... So it still um, causes... Uh, it, blackouts, luckily not anymore, but migraines, yes. What is a blackout? A blackout, I've only just learned about this when I was interviewing him for the book. He used to be a taxi driver. He's from Pakistan and he came to London in 1989. I um, was working as a taxi driver and sometimes he would like turn around to speak to the customer in the back or sneeze and his whole vision would go and his hearing would go. So he would have like a full sensory blackout for like a couple of seconds or something and okay. then it would come back again. But it was really dangerous. And that stopped during, the, some of the surgeries helped that, but he still gets migraines, really bad headaches, um, and kind of this disorientation where he's got quite a sensitive head from all the surgeries, but he'll accidentally knock into walls and you know hit his head a lot. Um, so that part is still part of his life, but now he also has this short-term memory loss as well. And since, so since when this uh, short like memory? Like 30 years ago, so just before I was born. A few okay. years before I was born. So that's how you always met? All my life he's had short-term memory loss, yeah. Never known anything different. Can't imagine, like, anything different. And you were saying you had this recording of him? Okay, so I saw a yeah. bit of it. Yeah. Where, like, you have, no, it's like him in the centre of the yeah. scene, like yeah. in the back garden or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This and was then, like five years ago, these ones, yeah. Yeah, and then you were having a chat. Yeah. And then he, miss, he seems to misremember. Yes, exactly. So these memories that we first started noticing when I was recording him or like I I guess they've always been there but if you've had someone in your life this whole time you never really I've never known any different so it doesn't surprise me whereas if my friends meet him for the first time it might be the first time they've met someone with short-term memory loss so they'll pick up on the things more but yeah it will I remember one of the videos was him saying like about what he did today that day and I was like oh where did you go and he was like Oh, I went to the gym and I worked out on the machines and my sister was like, no, you didn't. He was like, yes, I did. And she was like, no, you went swimming. He was like, oh yeah, I went swimming. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of his life. Um, or, you know, he'll be like, I need to call my dad. And we'll be like, you just called your dad. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of something. What I so think he remembers he, when you tell him? Whether or, he, or whether he like... does or whether he is like, believes us, I guess, yeah, is the other like, thing. Okay, yeah, sure. yeah, I don't know. Maybe he, he remembers and maybe he trusts us that our version of memory is more correct or something. Um, but that's a good question. I should ask him whether he actually... Or maybe he's just to be like... Or he's just like, yeah, You okay. guys are, <laughs> yeah. you get annoying and they'll be yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Well, <laughs> so true. I could have played with that more as a child. I could have yeah. lied to him all the time. <laughs> well, but I didn't. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he's had this my whole life and the dog is in the car is, as a text, same as the rice is on the hob, is from post-it notes. So... Post-it notes are all over our family house as memories and reminders. So they're on like the oven, fridge, front door, dad's wallet, mm. bedroom door, like everywhere. But I never thought of them as strange. But obviously when people come to our house, that is an unusual thing to see like post-it notes stuck everywhere. And they will say things such as, 
the rice is on the hob or turn the oven off or put your teeth in because he's got fake teeth or Mm -hmm. take your medication or you know I might have said to him oh dad I'm going to the shop when I left at home and then I'd write a note saying like I'm at the shop in case he forgets I said that and he comes downstairs and he's like where is where is my daughter (laughs) um so these post-it notes were there my whole life and my mum was the one who pointed out that there's something that maybe we could use as a I guess an inspiration for the project um and so yeah they've continued throughout the whole five years of photographing each other as this idea of post-it notes yeah and they became the titles and they became the titles yeah of the of the projects yeah um I mean I think something that is yeah interesting from seeing the work is kind of and I'm, I'm curious to see because as uh, someone that looks at your work, you know, I don't know you that mm-hmm. from different pictures and mm-hmm. from the brief mm-hmm. thing I know. And it's interesting the evolution that I can see. Like, I don't know how to say it, maybe it sounds weird, but like, I feel like the first project, it feels like it's season one of a show I've yeah, seen, yeah. <laughs> where I get to know, I get to know the, the character, the main person mm-hmm. into, you know, a bit of depth or like, you know, there's kind of, but it's still fairly superficial in the sense mm-hmm. of like, you know, I don't really know him whatever Mm -hmm. and I think it's interesting because the second one it seems like you're going a bit more Mm -hmm. in depth Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. because well Mm -hmm. for this second book well you did also family portraits magazine yeah that was like an editorial that we did in a day um but that was kind of it was somewhat linked to the book I guess but it was like two years ago we shot this and that was um on his um regarding his long-term memory so I was asking him things he remembers from Pakistan and growing up in his childhood because he lost his memory a few years after coming to England. So when he was in Pakistan, he didn't have short-term memory loss. So all his memories from Pakistan are completely whole um, and completely full. So that's what we were looking at for Family Portrait and it is kind of what we're looking at in The Rice is on the Hob as well. What what were you looking at in Family Portrait? Uh, Family Portrait was like his memories of childhood such as um, bucket baths. So he, he still actually does wash himself with a bucket so Mm -hmm. he we have a bath and a shower but he still will fill up a bucket and wash himself that way and when I visited Lahore for this project that's the way I had to wash myself well in the UK too no yeah he does it in the UK he's not freezing he with warm water with warm water yeah but still outside no he doesn't ah sorry (laughs) the outside the picture the outside was was definitely visual yeah ah okay okay because the picture was outside I'm like no maybe when he was in Pakistan I understand in Pakistan no in England he does it in the bathtub but with a bucket ah okay okay yeah um but so there's things like this or flying making and flying kites which we did for it um piling onto motorcycles holding hands with his best friends because in Pakistan they're very tactile and men walk down the street which is lovely like holding hands with each other and hugging each other and like kissing and like in a, as a way of like yeah, 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 yeah. showing love um, which in England we do not have at all mm-hmm. so yeah that was kind of more of a short editorial version of our project and then this The Rice on the Hob is the next big one that we've done since The Dogs in the Car How do you find your relation to your dad has do you see an evolution or like a change between the first project you, or mm. even the first video you did, mm. to this book? A hundred percent, yeah. The first video, I mean, he's very, he's always been very confident in front of a camera in the way that I'm not, and I know that my mum and my sister were this, you know, the same, like, where we don't love being in front of a camera, but dad was, not even that he loved being in front of it, he just had such a quiet confidence about him, which he did have in the first video, like, even though I was doing this, like, pointing a camera at his face. He never was like, oh God, I'm nervous or anything. He just felt himself still. Well, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't like... change, which was great. So that hasn't changed. He's still very good in front of the camera. But yeah, I think he's un- he has more agency since then to do with the project, I think. Like at the beginning, I almost think at the beginning he was doing it like a daughter has asked her dad to help with her homework, you know? Like, I think mm, yeah, I think he yeah, was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. this is her school project. He'd be like, okay, yeah, yeah. I'll help, right? Yeah, but yeah, now yeah. I think he's, he knows this is his project too. Um, like, with this, it's definitely his project too. And he's was very involved in, like, the process. And he had ideas that we did. And it's become more, more and more collaborative over time because he's become more and more confident with this idea of him being part of the project and not just, like, someone I'm photographing or someone I'm videoing, if that makes sense. So that's changed and also I think that he is way more confident and capable of talking about his illness 
to other people. I think before he didn't want to talk about it that much and he didn't want to make a scene or he didn't want to bother anyone, so he wouldn't talk about it. But now I think he's, he's more likely to say, like, yeah, I've got short-term memory loss, and he has more kind of respect for himself in talking about his memory loss as well. But you did a whole project before. Yeah, through, throughout that time. As in over the last five years, I think it's okay. got more and more. It's got better, definitely. But yeah, we, we haven't been taking photos like all the time every month for the last five years. It's definitely, you know, we did it for six months, then we took a break, then we did family portrait, then we took a break. And then for the last year, we've been working on this. So he's changed, obviously, as everyone does over the five year period as well. So how was the, the first time you were asking him? So you had to explain to him what it was yeah. about? Like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that, actually. Because I remember calling him on Elephant and Castle Roundabout and, and having just been in a tutorial and saying to my tutor, like, I think I might, I think I might make something about my dad. Like, what do you think like, about his short-term memory loss? And then I was like, yeah, I'm going to call him. And I called him. I remember he was like, I don't really understand why. And I was like, well, you know, like, I think that we forget that this isn't how everyone else lives their life and it is really interesting how you're coping with it and how you live with this illness. Um, and he was a bit like, okay, if you want to, but he didn't really understand. Whereas I think <laughs> over the last few years, it's gained traction. And, you know, when we, we, we showed the work, the dogs in the car in Italy, um, in Mantova, in 2022 oh, last nice. year yeah Amazing. which is really lovely and we were sat in a cafe and someone came up to us and they were like oh, are you tony from the they didn't look at me they were like are you tony from the project and he was like yes and that was his first time in real life seeing people you know being interested in him and reacting to the project and so i think over time he started to understand that it's not just us seeing this project like other people are looking at it and other people find it interesting and it's not just a little homework project. Anymore. And what does this, what does this person say? They were just like, oh, like, so nice to meet you. <laughs> like, are, are you going like to come to the festival? Yeah, like a celebrity. <laughs> yeah, he loves it. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't mind. He doesn't mind. He, he likes it. Really? He's, he's very good with, like, he's, he's very, definitely a people person. And since actually working together, he's been doing modeling without me I don't know if you knew this <laughs> no, so yeah. basically he's taking that whole career yeah, yeah. he's like abandoning you doing it with someone side. else now he's only done like four or five times really yeah without me Modeling. photographing Ooh. it uh, Primark Ex it? Expedia Stone Island and Mr. Porter um, photographed by our friend Vivek which was lovely who else did he do it with oh um, Johnny Walker damn yeah so he's had some good jobs damn yeah so and he keeps always calling me like, can you find me more modeling jobs? Or really? I guess I'm your agent. <laughs> wow. But um, all those jobs have come from people seeing this project and wanting to work with him. Yeah. I mean, I think he's great to photograph. I yeah. mean, I'm, 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 I don't know. And I don't know if he's just, if, you know, if you're his daughter, it's easier. Yeah. But I think he's got, yeah, I think a confidence. Um, yeah. He seems relaxed. Yeah, and it's interesting. Like, I thought, well, I was a bit worried the first time he did it because it wouldn't be me and I wouldn't be there. And it's, like, a big set of people. But he said he had a great time and that it all went well. So, yeah, he's definitely found that in himself as well because before he never obviously would have thought of himself as a model or someone who'd be good in front of a camera. So, despite, like, sorry, in, since doing this project, he's also learned that he enjoys that. So it's, like, a new thing for him as well. That's amazing. Yeah, it's cool. So how did it come about, this... The rice is on the hob. Yeah. So um, it's something I've always wanted to do. Basically, I haven't been to Lahore where we photographed this, where my dad's from in Pakistan, since I was, I think, three years old. How was that? Um, going back, yeah, it was amazing. And it was something I wanted to do for a really long time. I think as a, as a teenager, I wasn't that interested in going to Pakistan. He'd always ask me, I thought of Pakistan as a place that maybe I didn't identify with myself with that much. I didn't know, I don't know the language. So my memory of Pakistan was like, you know, not being able to communicate and it's it, finding it quite difficult. Um, the idea of being there for two weeks. But as time went on, um, I think it was actually lockdown. I started realizing it was something I really wanted to do. And I thought, how lovely would it be to go with dad and revisit his home? And also for him to talk to me about all his memories of childhood. So I started thinking of this idea and how I'd really, really love for it to be a photo book. But something that was not just, I think, 
for me, like the idea of making a photo book with dad that's just images of him, I'd want to do in like 10 years time because I wouldn't want to put an end on this collaboration. So I was like, if I'm going to make a book, I think it needs to be something singular project, like a, a short form um, book. So I thought maybe this is a good opportunity to work with dad and his cooking. So dad is not working as a chef. I don't know if you knew that. He doesn't work as a chef. Yeah, I know he has. He's more like a takeover. Yeah, so basically he, because of his short-term memory loss, he can't work as a chef full-time. He can't run a kitchen or anything. Um, so he works part-time at um, John Lewis as a sales assistant. But his dream has always been cooking. So at the same time we started taking pictures together in 2018 was also the same time that we started Safra's Kitchen and started doing these pop-ups and markets and kitchen takeovers and it gains a lot of traction and it sold out all the time and it, people really loved his food and I think he realized that he isn't just like just a good chef to his family but everyone else loves his food as well so um, we were kind of aiding both of our journeys at the same time um, so I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to kind of rekindle and put together like his journey of cooking and my journey of photography mm. to create this collaboration. So how was it the first it's not the first time, but like I feel like if you went when you were three years old, yeah, it's basically it's close to a yeah. first time in the sense of like I don't know how much you remember, but yeah, it was so basically I went to Karachi, which is the south, when I was like 12 years old, but that's quite a different area. So I didn't remember anything of Lahore other than kite flying. I really, really remember. I th well, I think I remember because they're not pictures, so it must be it? my memory. Yeah, I remember being on a roof, the roof where we shot the image of the rice is on the hob. I remember being on that roof and there being kites in the sky and me flying a kite so well. And I, there's not a picture of it, which means it must be a memory and not just a memory of an image. But sadly, kite flying is now illegal oh. in Lahore. What? It became illegal. I found that out when I was there because I was like, let's fly a kite. And it's yeah. completely illegal. Like you can be arrested um, the because there used to be this kite flying festival in, I think, like springtime. And... What would happen is everyone in Pakistan, it, mainly Punjab, like Lahore area, would fly their kites on their roof and put these shards of glass, I think it was shards of glass, on the string. Uh, to so you cut, cut, other, yeah, to cut other people's... I think I've seen it somewhere. Yeah, so you could be like the last person, the last kite in the sky. But then what would happen is these kites would fall from the sky yeah. with shards of glass and obviously cut people and hurt, damn, you know, hurt people. So they, they banned wow. kite flying. But interestingly, I saw one kite when I was there I did see one kite and I was like I wonder if that's a child or an adult like whether it's an adult mm. who has done kite flying their whole life and they miss it or a child who's never done kite flying sneak like being naughty and like so do both do it so children and adults yeah before it was children my dad did it up until he left so um, that was my only memory really and I had a slight memory of the courtyard which we also photographed in this book it's the image of dad with the red fabric and there's a piece of sky I can show you later, but mm -hmm. um, I have a memory of that courtyard. But other than that, basically nothing. So going back there was like a big, a big thing for me. Um, and I think I had like all these different expectations of kind of feeling out of place or feeling like not connected with the space because it's, again, not speaking the language and having not been there for so long that actually I felt so connected with the space and felt really at home in a place that I've really like never been before. Yeah, because um, you had to then, so not only you were going, but like for yeah the second time, yeah but you also wanted to photograph it. Yeah, so I was like, I need to feel comfortable in the space and understand the space to feel comfortable photographing it and photographing dad in it. But I think a lot of it was actually just speaking to my dad and getting him to show me around. So I wanted to see his old school. I wanted to see where he'd play cricket or where. So I we did a lot of walking. And then later on in the weeks, we started doing the photographing. How do you go? Up? So, how do you go? My I think my question also was like, because you have in this book you have recipes yeah. and pictures. Yeah. Because I feel like they both work together, so it's not like the pictures are illustrating the recipes no, or yeah, not. Yeah, there's no pictures of the food or anything. Like there's hints, no. Yeah, yeah, of yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Food. There's not like this is how the dish should look mm. or anything. Like this is not stereotypical in that way. Yeah, yeah, and I mean I, I love that, um, but I also think like how do you go? Yeah. How how do you think about? what to show in yeah. pictures well i think i really wanted to show my exploration of pakistan and my exploration of lahore for in some ways the first time as an adult alongside my dad's kind of re reconnection with home so we'd go out together and we'd talk about what we wanted to photograph so 
um, throughout the book, there are a series of portraits um, of, of what was meant to be strangers. So I had this idea of putting a black backdrop. Throw, I threw it over my dad's old house, like on a, a fence. Um, and I was hoping strangers would come by and I'd ask to take their portrait. And my dad would, in Urdu and my cousin Marek would ask what your favourite dish is and who cooked it for you. But interestingly, every almost everyone that walked past recognised my dad immediately because <laughs> so everyone who came past was like popular. Tony, and I was like, "What? How do you know everyone?" They'd be like, "You must be Tamra." Like, it was like actually, even though it's a giant, giant city, this little area called Krishnagar that my dad grew up in, people have stayed for generations. So people would walk past, and it was really lovely because then they'd heard it's like herding sheep, like they'd run off and bring back people. And so I met a lot of people through that, which was really interesting and heard a lot of stories. Um, so that was like a planned day, for example. Um, and there are other planned images such as, you know, dad on the floor or dad with the pots, um, dad with the post-it notes all over him. So a lot of them were kind of performative portraits, very similar to the, the dogs in the car. Um, and then a lot of them were also just me walking around with my camera, which is something I've never done before. Because in London, personally, I don't find it as inspiring, maybe, for me to do street photography. And I also think that when you pull out your camera, I don't know if you found this, when you pull out your camera in front of a stranger, they immediately change their whole... If they see your camera, their whole face changes, you know? As in... They stop being relaxed. They see the camera uh, and they yeah. might fix their hair. I know I would. I might fix yeah, my yeah, hair yeah, yeah. or reposition my shoulders or something right yeah, yeah, yeah. um and i i personally didn't want to photograph anyone without their consent so i'd always ask them first like can i take a photograph of you in the fear that then they would change their whole what i'd seen that it mm. would all change by the time i got the camera out but interestingly in pakistan i'd say to someone who's like there's an image of a guy sat on his stool his um veg stool with his foot up and he was looking i was taking photos of we're at the shop and he was looking at me like the whole time and I thought I'm just going to ask him can I take a photograph of you I pulled my camera out and he didn't his expression didn't change he didn't move an inch he stayed the exact same and so I realized actually taking street photography in Pakistan is quite different to taking street photography in Europe so I quite enjoyed it so we do a lot of days just walking around and kind of exploring with the camera as well yeah I mean yeah I mean I, I don't know I think here it gets always very even just taking a camera out even maybe because you were shooting in medium format, right? Yes, yeah. I feel like heavy. that that always got, but always gives like a bit of a like um, yeah conversation or something. Yeah, or like yeah. people don't know exactly yeah. what the hell yeah. that thing you have mm -hmm. is doing exactly. Yeah, exactly. People are interested, and definitely in Pakistan, like that was when I was taking portraits, the on the black um, backdrop, I had a tripod with my mamiya on it, and there was a lady who lived in the house on that street. And she came out, she kept giving us food. She must have been my age. Kept giving us food, kept giving us Coca-Cola. And I was like, oh, this is really kind. You don't need to. And she was like, I've never seen a photographer, like, ever in her whole life. She was like, I've never seen anyone with a camera. And she was just so excited. She was like, do you want to come to ours for dinner? <laughs> like, so hospitable and lovely. So, yeah, I think there is, like, a different view on getting a camera out in Pakistan. Maybe to, like, in London, if I pulled a camera out. And do you know why... So what's the, what do you think is the idea behind so bringing you mm. Coca-Cola? Yeah, I, I, genuine mm. kindness. Just being Just kindness. Nice. In Pakistan, people are so kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, it was simply out of kindness. Because the same thing I thought, I was like, why are you giving me all these things? But it's just because she, want, she didn't want her photograph taken, but she still wanted to be involved. Um, so she was just being lovely, really. <laughs> I mean, I feel like in Spain also it would happen. Yes, yeah. So I don't know, maybe it wouldn't bring you that many things. Yeah. But like... I think it's more common that people are like, especially if you are in a bit of a spe very specific place. Yeah, of yeah, like, yeah. If it's a big city, it's different. But yeah, like, like a smaller town or something. Yeah, in a smaller yeah. town or so, yeah. something. Like, and there's some lady there. And mm. they'll be like, you know, because it's also an event. Yeah, 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 uh, exactly. That things happen in some yeah, places. Yeah, exactly. Well, I guess then I have to ask you, like, what's, what's your favorite dish and who made it? That's from my dad. My, my favorite dish in general, sorry. Um, my yeah, favorite right. dish is pakoras with tamarind and mint sauce, which is what they will be serving at the book launch actually as well. So my dad has made them my whole life. So it is your um, dad's recipe? It's my dad's recipe. Is it in mean, the book? Yes, yeah, in the book. It's the first, yeah, it's the first recipe in the book. Um, 
the, they're like these fried veg, like potatoes, cabbage. I mean, it depends. I don't know what one he's put in this time. He plays around with it, but it's normally kind of like potatoes, cabbage, peppers, kind of mixed in with gram flour, which is like a chickpea flour, and then fried with this kind of spicy, minty mango sauce. Um, so that's my favorite. Do you, what, what it brings to mind? What, when I eat the food? Yeah. Yeah, it's comfort, like pure comfort. And I remember once I ordered... I mean, obviously I'm biased, but I remember once I came back from a shoot and I was so tired and all I wanted was my dad's food. And so I never order Indian takeaways because in my life we never did that. Dad would make, if we were going to make South Asian food, if, sorry, if we're going to eat it, dad would make it, we'd never order it. So I've never done that. And I was so desperate for it. I looked up like nearest Indian takeaway with good reviews, ordered pakoras. And they arrived, and I was so disappointed. I, I was, was like, gonna what? say, it's I was like, like, what is this? Like, I was like, is this what other people are eating? Especially if you're hungry and tired. Yeah, and I was. That's the... I actually think it was worse that I, I should have yeah, had yeah, like pasta go, or something. Ah, this piece and of I was shit. like, what? I was like, because I've never eaten anyone else's pakoras. Yeah. So in my head, I I thought maybe they're all like you know something like dads, but maybe he does just make the best pakoras. Maybe yeah, maybe people have to buy the book. To yes, make maybe them, people have to buy one. the book. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that's my favorite. And visually, does it bring you anything? Visually, the pakoras. Yeah. The pakoras visually, there is an image of the pakora. My dad. The pakora. I mean, as in when you eat it, like does it? Oh, I see. If you the think same. of like yeah memories. Yeah, I think my memories of pakoras are like having all my family in London, so my mum's English, and so most of my family live in London. Um, having all my family members round my dad's house, and he just pulls out like pakora after like honestly so many and then he'll give us a main dish but we have no room in our bellies because we've all eaten like 20 pakoras because no one can say no because you just want more then dad will come out with like 10 big bowls of food where they're all like tony we can't eat anymore (laughs) we've eaten too many pakoras so it's my memory of it is tends to be us with at home with all my family just eating loads and loads and loads and loads i mean i think it's nice because i feel like because for me it has like it's i mean it's all about socializing. Yeah, exactly. So either yeah. family or friends or mm-hmm. like me and my friends also like get together back home and we cook. Yeah. And then we all eat. Mm-hmm. But we, can, we all cook. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, when I was in Pakistan, I, dad does this in general actually, but I noticed it's just a thing in Pakistan, probably in lots of other countries, where we wake up in the morning and the first discussion is what are we having for dinner? <laughs> Whereas like in England, yeah, I, don't, I don't think about dinner. Until it's, unless I'm having people around. Well, if you have to marinate for four, six that, hours. That's why, yeah. And they yeah. and they they're like, what does everyone want for dinner? Like, is the first thing they think about every single day. Yeah. And Dad, I think definitely also does that because I'll call him. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm just gonna make something for dinner, but it's like 10 a.m. So they're always thinking about like making food. Whereas I think I don't know if this is England or just my habit of life, like being a freelancer and stuff. Mm-hmm. I normally come home and just whip up something that's in the fridge I don't really think mm-hmm. about like really food is like I think I don't give that much respect and time to food as my dad does where like but that's because it's his passion I guess he's yeah. excited to wake I up mean, in the morning and cook <laughs> but to be fair like I'll get I'll get upset if I eat if I don't eat not even something nice but like something that yeah like sometimes it can make me even feel worse yeah if yeah, I yeah. Go and I eat, eat like, some shit food <laughs> if, I, if i have a difficult day or whatever yeah and i go for lunch hey a cold sandwich I'm yeah like, same yeah, like it puts I, me in such a bad mood I, like i start like it just goes down like yeah. and actually that's interesting because i was thinking that both the dogs in the car mm-hmm. had to do you know it had i feel like quite a big element of humor yeah humor mm-hmm. mm, I don't need to call it comedy, but like humor, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I think it's interesting, like because to me, humor and food, mm-hmm. which for me are like, I, I, I need those in my yeah. life because I, I feel like it turns your day around. Yeah, 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 definitely. Like I have, I can have a shit day. Yeah. And then go home and I, I eat something. Mm-hmm. I cook myself something. Nice. Yeah. Nice or like that, you know, it hits the spot. Mm-hmm. And same for like. I feel, I, know, I feel like you can turn around a whole day mm-hmm. just back with a good meal. Mm-hmm. And the same with humor. I feel like if you got a bit of humor... Mm-hmm. It can make anything bad a little bit better, I think. And, the, and that's this idea of comic relief, isn't it? Like, you have a... Re- I don't know if you've heard that term of comic relief. Um, but it's like, yeah, this idea of having something awful happen. But then you just have a little bit of comedy and it relieves 
you know, some of the tension of it. So obviously, yeah, it is humorous the way we photograph and stuff and it's positive, but it is hard, like for dad, like it's super hard and he has, you know, has had, has, has really bad days and he can, it, sometimes he can cope with it better than other times. Sometimes he wakes up and he's really angry at himself and he has this frustration of, you know, like, why am I like this? Why can't I remember anything? And he really beats himself up and that's not humorous and that's not positive and it's not funny, you know, but it's that, it's the reality that, is is living with illness is that there's going to be hard times and there's you know other times where he comes home and he's like I forgot my teeth and mm-hmm. makes a joke out of it and sometimes where he's crying you know like it's it's just the balance of life but I think for me this project wasn't for photographing the hard hard times because I'm still a daughter and I don't think I feel comfortable being like can I take a picture of you whilst he's really angry with himself or feeling really frustrated so it's more for the positive sides and for like you say, like bringing positivity into something darker. So it's, you know, he can be having a hard time, but we can work on a new picture and he can feel like confidence again and feel like the happiness again, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think, yeah, of course, because I feel like it's not realistic to think like someone's going to be like always... Yeah, like like happy and finding it funny and, you know, like it's obviously really hard and I think I just... Sometimes people ask like why I don't photograph that side of things. But, yeah, I think, like, as someone who's photographing a, a dad, like, there's boundaries and, like, this is this is one side of the story, I guess. Um, but in the book, actually, there is an interview at the back, which is the first time, I don't know if you yeah, managed read to it. read it. Yeah, you did. Cool. So yeah. I, I ch- the chunk that I was yeah, yeah, able to see, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you're welcome to read it more later. But, yeah, it's discussing the harder times as well, which is kind of the first time we've done that physically. I mean, obviously, there's undertones of it, but... Yeah, it's the first time we're literally talking about it was in the it, project. And for you? Not for me. So it wasn't the first time? No. Some things were the first time, but most of it I had discussed with him before. But I've never sat down with him for like an hour and had an interview conversation with him. It's more just things we talked about in life. But How was that? It was really interesting, yeah. It was really emotional. Like, it, it was really hard, some of it, especially knowing that we were doing it for the purpose of other people reading it. So it was a very private conversation which then was going to become very public. Um, Mm. So some things I did edit out of the interview because they were too personal. Um, But it was a really raw conversation. And, you know, him talking about when he lost his memory and when he realised it was gone and that kind of period of time where I wasn't even alive at that point, you know, that was really hard to hear, like the idea of him being in so much pain and being so worried and having to realise that he has to live with this forever. Like some things like that are really hard to hear, but um, I think also important to give context to the project that we're making and why we're making it. I, I think it would be harder for me from my own dad. Yeah. Because I feel like he's always, you know, I feel, well, he's part of growing up. There's like this kind of slowly your parents, you see the vulnerability in your yeah. parents, which has always been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just like open up, opening up to it, yeah. Yeah, and he's always. Uh, I imagine difficult and I think it's very impressive that your dad is up for yeah I'm very lucky any of this and I say with you know with admiration of like also I don't know I also think as a I mean but like I feel like as a man yeah 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 it's also not easy to talk about certain things yeah. to be in a certain exactly. way um, he grew up in a family he has a brother who's younger and three older sisters and now he's in a nuclear family of me, I have a sister and my mum. So I think he's always been around very feminine energy, um, which has meant he isn't, he doesn't fall into the stereotype of manliness or macho-ness very often. Sometimes he does. Like, you know, if some, if a shelf falls down, obviously I'm going to ask dad to do it or, you know, those kind of things. He's still the man who will have the drill and have the car and he rides yeah. a motorbike and whatever. But he also is someone that does talk about his emotion and cr- he's cried in front of me my whole life. So mm. I've had that kind of, sensitivity from him forever um so it meant that i think if i hadn't had that it would have been harder to start this project but he and himself is a very like emotional and open person about yeah. talking with things yeah. well that, i think that's, that's that's great i mean yeah of course i feel like you know most men i don't think they fall in strictly in, yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in the stereotype um but i think it's still for anyone uh, it's still a quite a big thing definitely to talk about and I think that's something that was quite beautiful. It's like it's interesting. It has this kind of 
two sides of the because it's a very joyful mm -hmm. book. So you have a sun and mm -hmm. people smile and, and I don't know, there's kind of that energy and there's the recipes and mm -hmm. the warmth and but then you also have that kind of I feel like and then I see that also as an evolution in the sense of like a change from the previous project, which yeah. is you're you have a little bit more of that kind yeah. of darker side or like not even darker side but like I would say like I don't know how, how I would say Yeah, I guess I'm, there's more context or more like depth maybe um than the first projects but i think that's also my change in being a photographer from five years ago now like i feel more confident in you know the more discussing more about the project and discussing more within the images as well um and throughout the book are these handwritten notes from dad as well yeah so actually my voice in terms of literally my voice in terms of words yeah. isn't really in it very much it's more my dad's voice which i i really wanted was for him to have like his narrative throughout the whole book rather than i think photographers normally their narrative comes before the subject tends mm -hmm. to because you have more power or control yeah, or like you the... you're, you're dominating how the project ends up i guess but for this i really wanted his to kind of his voice to be heard throughout the whole book so that it didn't it felt like he was there the whole time that he was a part of it the whole way through mm. like collaborating with it yeah i mean i think yeah and i think what i meant before it was like it's more like i feel like there's some pain that's released yes yeah, yeah which yeah. i think it makes it i don't know again i feel like it gives a whole more whole idea and depth and i think before we we're talking about you know humor and yeah. kind of uh moments that are more you're, someone is more down mm -hmm. I genuinely think like the people I know that are very funny usually are also very they embrace a lot kind of yeah. the downsides mm -hmm. of when they're feeling really low mm -hmm. or like crying and, and but then I feel like I don't know how I feel like those two need to be somehow to, to, they have to exist yeah, at the same time. Definitely. I don't know how to say it, like exist in the same space at the same yeah, time. Yeah, because I feel like that when I've met people that deny the lower sides of yeah. life, they don't. It seems like they can't embrace either yeah. the, the really good one. I yeah. don't know. Have it, to have the highs and the lows. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Like maybe it's a weird hypothesis. It makes no, no sense. Yeah. But like no, I think that's true. I mean, that's definitely how I live. Like I think I'm very emotional, but it means the lows can be quite low, but it means the highs. Are really uh, high so uh, yeah <laughs> i think i prefer it than maybe living in a smaller wave where you know yeah I'm like man yeah meh, meh, so meh. yeah definitely dad and i are the kind of people that we have really hard times and we'll cry in front of each other but then we'll also you know have the greatest laughs and um yeah so he definitely is one of those people as well yeah no i think that's beautiful um and actually uh what i was thinking also is that you know comparing because you know there's the photography and the recipes mm -hmm. um and i feel like it's mentioned a little bit on the text and the pre preface yeah, yeah yeah from giotti yes Patel? yes yeah that's beautiful that piece of writing i yeah. love it so much it makes me cry every time i read it still what do you like, like about like it 10 times she just i don't know how she, well she's obviously very talented so giotti is a author and a novelist so she comes from a more like fiction based book writing perspective. And when I was thinking of who could do the pretext, um, I didn't want something which just explains the book before you've read it. I didn't want like an introduction. I wanted something which could stand alone as well. Um, and so she uh, went on a call with us, with me and my dad for like an hour or two and asked him all these questions about his childhood and asked for pictures of the house and old photographs and a load of stuff. Um, and she really wants to write this piece which transcends time. So um, it's kind of the past, present and future all happening at the same time and this kind of confusion of what's reality and what's not. So playing with this idea of memory, which yeah, was yeah. in a, I don't even know how many words, it was like 700 words, I don't know how she did it, made something so beautiful, so but so telling in such a short space. So she basically is writing in second person and it's like she's writing... Um, through my dad's eyes so it's you know you enter the door enter through the door or whatever so when you're reading it it's almost like you're in my dad's headspace and she plays around with like my grandma and my granddad who have passed and like 
me being there and me being in England and it's yeah it's really beautiful and I think is a really good way of explaining what this book is doing which is kind of talking about now but also talking about my dad's past where I wasn't there so merging these two time periods because she talks about uh, paper squares yeah 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 um, and it was very interesting because I didn't know I actually I, I'm not very sure but like I didn't know if he referred and I think that's the, the interesting because I think I wasn't sure if they referred to pictures or recipes. Yeah, yeah. And actually, I was thinking that, I mean, from this text also, I think that's the allusion is, is that both photography and mm -hmm. uh, recipes, I feel like they're very, for me, it's funny because they're very, I don't know, almost scientific, like mm -hmm. objectively, you know, it's like chemistry and like, yeah. you know, it's nothing, like it's, it's very much like you can precisely do it. Mm -hmm. And still, they're both like it feels a bit like alchemy. Yeah. Like you can get memories out of both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. Because I feel like you create like if you cook, I don't know, my mom's dish mm. or whatever, then I'm kind of like transported. Yeah, to that almost time. Almost like. Or you look at a picture and you're transported to that time. Yeah, definitely. And I think I, I yeah, it's very interesting the way she worded recipes was like they weren't like you say like these pieces of text that were very regimented she described them as these kind of as memories that transcend and can, you know she talks about how like these recipes will continue throughout time because obviously I'll teach them if I had children or people in my life and now that it's going to be now it is a physical book it's like hopefully other people will try them and pass them on and the recipes in the book are on this perforated paper that you can tear out so it means that if you wanted to and what me and Tom Booth which are the designer of the book wanted was that you could, you know, you could physically pass them to a friend and they could travel as pieces of paper throughout the world in the way that we used to share recipes. It's like, you take this home and try it yourself. Um, and so hopefully people will be encouraged to do that. But it is scary ripping a piece of paper out of a book. I mean, I think that's why, I think it was beautiful. Oh yeah, also that. Because yeah. it's such a nice book that yeah. I'll be like... I, I still mean, haven't done it. And I'm like, <laughs> how can I tell I anyone else to do it if I can't do it? So I need to... I need to brave it and tell like, Yeah, out. you should do it at the launch. You should like... Yeah, rep loads rah, rah. of them out, throw them in the air. <laughs> um, no, but I think it's amazing. So what I like is that... I don't know why sometimes photo books feel a bit... That the things that they have in them feel a bit ornamental. So like, oh, this is not yeah. really to be done. But I think... I think that's why I was doing the recipe. Yeah. Because I was like, okay, well, let's... I got some time. Let's do this this recipe that yeah. I, I, I can see. And, and it was really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, good. I only follow three quarters. <laughs> yeah. But it was very nice. And I think, yeah, no, I think it's amazing that you can, like, it's genuinely doable. I don't know how to say it. Like, yeah, I don't yeah, know if yeah. it sounds weird to no, say, but like, no. you know how some photo books It's like feel. a real thing that you can yes. partake in. And I wanted it to be interactive. Like, I want it to be, like, the recipes we put in are accessible recipes. That they're not like, I don't know, sometimes I read cookbooks and I'm like... I'd love to try this food, but like, am I ever going to make this? Probably not. Yeah. So like we try to make most of these recipes ones that you can actually make and you yeah. will feel encouraged to make. And hopefully at the book launch, my dad's going to be making pakoras and Nagasi koftas. And it'll be like, you know, a taster, like one yeah, dish, yeah, but yeah. it's like a way of, like you say, like eating the foods so that when you look at the book, you like have an idea of these tastes. And for me, obviously I know all the tastes and smells, but if you don't, like it's hard to imagine them, I think. It's, it's a bit easy. communion. So yeah. it's a bit yeah. to bring it to religious terms, like yeah. it's a bit like everyone yeah. kind of shares sharing exactly the same experience. Exactly. And that's how you eat. Like it's not like whenever my dad makes food, it's never plated up on a plate. Like it's always in the middle of the table. And then like What do you mean? As in you know, like sometimes it's not like, to share. Yeah. It's never like a thing on each plate. It's always like a, loads of food in the middle mm -hmm. and then you all take what you want and go back for more and there's not this English etiquette of like yeah. having to finish all your food and then like, you know, not being able to ask for more. Like it's very much like keep going and have whatever you want until you're so full you have to undo your jeans. Um, I mean, so. yesterday I was, I was very full yeah. with, uh, <laughs> with the chicken. I uh, no, I mean, I like to close with, uh, I really like the quote you know, this this says I feel and I feel like it summarizes to me the book. Yeah. Which says like uh, from Gioti Patel. Mm -hmm. Um I says, Are these recipes or are they memories or are they love? And I think I think it's so lovely. Yeah, I think that yeah. I think it summarizes very much the the energy. Definitely. Um Yeah, cool. Well take Yeah, but she, yeah, I love that quote as well. Yeah. I think that piece of writing is so beautiful. We read it in here when it, I got the email and I was in here with my dad writing 
like the notes. So we were in here writing on paper with like 10 different pens to figure out what looked good. We got the email, I remember it was like the most like heartwarming thing to read because obviously you don't hear, like you don't often have someone else write about your experience in that way. And some in a way that's so, it's like fictional, but it's also reality. And I thought it was, yeah, it's incredible. So one of the quotes is going to be in the gallery as a vinyl as well. Because I was like, I can't not have people... Like, I want to urge everyone that gets this book to read the text. Because I think sometimes... The reason we also made it one page is because sometimes I think you get a photo book and there's, like, ten pages of text at the beginning. Yeah, like, I'll, not gonna read I'll that. be the I'm first like, one to do yeah. that. <laughs> like, one Steve. day I will, but I'm a visual learner, so... <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm a visual learner. Yeah, so yeah, I was yeah. like, maybe I'll Let's get it all from way. the pictures. Let's say visual But learner. I think for this text, that's why we wanted it as one page, because I was like, I really, really want everyone to read that because I think it's such a good, like... Pal, like a good starter I guess yeah, yeah. of like the rest of the book oh it's beautiful um, yeah and I think with that thank you very much thank you took enough of your time <laughs> no it's fine thank you so much